What's the point in creating cool looking listings if there's no way of sorting that information, hiding things that are not relevant, and allowing the user to interact with the data on screen to get the results that they're looking for? Well, in today's video on creating dynamic WordPress websites, I'm going to show you how you can do just some of those cool things. In today's video, we're going to see how we can use Jet Engine alongside Jet Smart Filters and Elementor Pro to start creating more advanced searches. So if you're looking to do things like event listings and that kind of thing, this is going to be a great way of allowing you to sort that information and hide events that are no longer relevant. If you're interested, let's take a look. My name is Paul C and this is WP Touch, the channel where we create beautiful WordPress websites together. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so you're going to need to have these different plugins purchased and installed and all the applicable links are in the description below. So if you're looking to find them, you can find all the relevant data and information there. Okay, so this is the kind of thing that we're looking to create. You can see we've got some simple options on the left-hand side that allow us to filter the information. We're only displaying events that are actually applicable to this date and moving forward, so any older events will no longer be shown. So I'm going to show you how you can recreate something like this for yourself. Now, obviously, you're not limited to dealing with dates and events and things. You can have this to show pretty much anything you want. Now, this video follows on from the two previous videos. So if you haven't checked those out, I'd recommend taking a look at the link in the description below. And I'll also pop that in the corner right now. Check those videos out just to make sure you're up to speed with what we're doing, because I am going to assume some prior knowledge based upon the things we've covered in those first two videos. So the first thing we need to do now that I've jumped over the dashboard is to go through and edit the template we created in the previous video to now take advantage of the ability to filter the data based upon the current date and time. It's very easy to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the template section of Elementor Pro, come down to our theme builder, and inside there we're looking for the event listing archive. Once we've done that, we're going to come into edit with Elementor. That now takes us through and allows us to start editing the actual content. So let's just scroll down through. As you can see, there's all our events listed. As you can see, we've got a date that's actually set in the past. So this is set for last year. So we need to go through and use these things now to filter this information to only show relevant details for events that are forthcoming and not out of date ones. To do that, it's very easy. Just simply click on the edit listing grid. So in the top corner, we've now got this listing grid selected. We'll come out to the post query. We're going to come into there and you can see we've got a meta query set up. If I click on there, you can see we've got a couple of things. We've got the type is a meta query because we're going to search the metadata that we've got as part of our actual custom post type. So meta query is fine. Once we've done that, we're going to say what key or field are we going to use? Now, I always I'd sort of have a standard way of laying out my name and IDs for any of the custom fields that I create. I'll put the name of the custom field, in this example, event date, and I'll put an underscore between each of the words so I'll know that I use that convention, no capital letters or anything, just means that I know exactly what I'm referencing. Once I've done that, we've then got the option for the different kinds of operators. And you can see there's a ton of different options, equal, not equal to, and so on and so forth. What we're going to do is we're going to say greater than or equal to, so once we set the operator, the final thing we really need to do is set the value. Now, because we obviously don't know when the viewer is going to be viewing this page, we need to make sure that when they are viewing it, it checks against all of the information in our database and only displays any of the events that are currently operating now or in the future. Very easy to do. We just come into the value area and we simply insert now. Now, this is using a server timestamp kind of thing. So it just basically goes through and checks to see what the current time is and then we'll filter the database information and only show those events that are today or in the future. So it's a very, very easy way of doing things. Finally, you've got the type. And all I'm going to do is set that to date for this example to ensure that we are telling it we're using the right kind of format to filter our information. Now, you can see once we've done that, our Castle Donington, our download festival has now disappeared because obviously that was a past event. So if I come back to the value and I just take that out, you'll see that brings download back. You can see the date for that was June the 13th, 2018, which is obviously past. And once you put now back in there, it gets rid of that completely. Now, obviously, you're not limited to just one type of post query. You can go through and you can stack those on top of each other. So if you wanted to, you could add a second query. And then we can go through and we can specify the meta query relation and any taxonomy query relations, whether they're using the and or the or. So we can make sure that whatever kind of filters or queries we set up, that we've got them going through in the right way and we're using the right conditions to make sure that we get only the results that we want to display. So that's what I wanted to show you. So if we now hit update on there... What we're going to do is jump over into our test page 
and we'll just come into there and you can see now that's only showing the five events we no longer have that download event in there and if we click through on any of these events we'll then go through to our new event page and as you can see it pulls in all the relevant information for the name of the festival the date who posted this the time and what type of event it actually is so it's incredibly easy to work with incredibly intuitive and if you are wish used to working with these kinds of queries you're going to find it very easy to create much more complex much more feature rich websites very quickly and easily so now that we've gone through and seen how easy it is to filter or query the database for the information on screen let's add another level of interactivity into this where we can let the user choose various different factors with this we're going to again keep it really simple we're just going to allow them to choose the different type in other words an indoor or an outdoor location but obviously whatever data you have as part of your custom fields using jet engine advanced custom fields pods and so on you can query against that and filter against that so what we're going to do is we're going to come back over into uh, the dashboard and we're going to come back down we're going to exit out of this dashboard once we've done that we're going to take a look on the left hand side and because we have jet smart filters installed we have a new entry called smart filters if we go into the smart filter section you can see it shows us the events filter which is a filter that i've created if we just open that up and take a look at what's going on inside there you'll see it's incredibly simple we've got the filter label which is just effectively a name that we're going to use for this particular filter then we've got the active filter label and again we're just duplicating that information in there we then got the filter type and this is where we can go through and choose what type of filter we want to use whether we want to use check boxes select date ranges number ranges check ranges radio boxes searches and so on we're going to keep this to a checkbox list then we're going to say what is our data source in other words what are we going to use this filter to query against what are we going to use it to filter information against we've got taxonomies manual input posts custom fields and so on we're going to use the taxonomies because under the events we've got two different types of events if we come over you can see we have event type and in there we've got indoor events and outdoor events so what we're going to do is just use that taxonomy to filter the information. So you can see once we choose taxonomy, it opens up the options then below for the type of data source that you're using. If we weren't using taxonomies, we're using like posts. You can see once we do that, it'll change and allow gives us the ability to go through and choose a post type. If we come back up and say custom fields, you can see it says custom key field. I'm going to keep this simple, but I will take a look at doing more on the JetSmart filters in their own dedicated video a little bit further down the line. So don't worry, this is just a sort of introduction to how you can use these and add another level of interactivity. So let's go back to our taxonomies. You can see the taxonomy we've got to choose, and you can see there's a range in there. And obviously what we want is the event type. So we're going to choose that. You see it says show only child of current term or group terms by parents. We're going to leave those as they are. Then you've got the query settings. And finally, you've got notes. We don't need to change anything else in there. We've set up our query, and that's all we need to do. We've set up our filter. So we're going to hit update on there or create filter if it was a new filter. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just jump back over into our templates, back into our theme builder, come back down to our event listing, and we're going to edit that with Elementor. Once we're inside there, we're going to add in a new column on the left-hand side to apply and build our filter up. So what we're going to do is just simply come in, right-click, and we're going to say add new column and we'll just simply drag that back over there and we'll resize this a little bit because we don't need to take up anywhere near as much room so we set that to about 20 percent somewhere around there okay so once we've done that now we can come back in to the left hand side where our widgets are and we can scroll down all we're going to do is we're looking for those filters now you can see currently we have 10 different types of filters and which type of filter you create dictates which filter widget you're going to use so you can see again we've got those range filters select filters check range and so on and so forth what we want is the checkbox filter so we're going to drag that over drop that in there and you can see now it just puts in a blank area now we just need to go through and do a couple of things so you can see the first thing we want is to select the filter we click on there it'll show us a list of all the filters that we've created in our example we've only created that events filter so we'll choose that then it says this filter for and you can see we can now choose what type of data are we actually checking this against we're using jet engine but obviously if you were using something like your elemental pro archives or you were dealing with woocommerce and so on you can pull those in as well because we use jet engine to create our archive page and our listings we're just going to choose jet engine from the options next up we've got the apply type we've got two methods we can apply using ajax which means there's no page reload or we can choose the page reload option 
Choose whichever you think is the most versatile for the website that you're working with. I'm just going to simply stick with the Ajax option. You can see it says apply on value change. In other words, are we going to actually have this update dynamically in the background with the Ajax whenever we tick or untick a box? Or if we wanted to, we could add a button into our design and say click on apply button. We leave it to value change because that works great with the Ajax option. You can see if we choose the button option, we can just add a button in by using show apply button. We've also got show filter label, and if we want to, we can use query IDs. We don't need to do any of that for this particular example. We're just going to leave it as is. Next up, if we want to, we can come in and style this so you can see we can adjust the spacing between the items. We can adjust the checkbox design, the icons, the labels, and so on. So you can see we have all the normal things we'd expect inside Elementor. We leave all the styling and everything on there. We're just not too bothered about that. All I'm going to do is come into this and I'm going to set this now to be showing two records just to open up a bit of space and we'll just simply click on update so we've now created our filter applied the filter option into our design and what we're going to do is just jump over to our test page we'll refresh this now to show those filters and as you can see if we just choose outdoor event it'll dynamically update and now only show us any events that fall into the outdoor category uncheck that choose the indoor events and you can see we can see only the indoor events. So it's very quick and easy to do and it's not difficult at all to add in these smart filters using Jet Smart Filters and hopefully what you can see is we can very quickly and easily create a nice looking easy to use layout. So the final thing I want to do is just make sure that we've got some pagination that allows the end user to be able to go through when we have lots and lots of events. Very easy to do. Simply just jump back over into our template in Elementor. We're going to simply scroll to the bottom of our events listing. We're going to come back over. We're going to come into our widget on the left hand side. Scroll down and you can see under the Jet Smart filters, the final option is pagination. Let's just drag and drop that over onto our page. And once we've done that, I'm going to right click and say I want to paste my style because I've already created the styling for this. There we go. We've now set up our styling. So the final thing we really need to do is just say what do we want the pagination to be applied to. We're going to come in and say Jet Engine like we did previously. And we're going to leave the apply type to be Ajax as well. So we can use that in conjunction with our filters. And there we go. That is our events listing setup all created inside Elementor Pro using Jet Smart Filters and Jet Engine. Now this is a pretty simple example, but what it should demonstrate to you is how easy it is to build up more complicated pages all done through using Jet Engine, Jet Smart Filters, and Elementor Pro, especially when you're working with the template structures, you can then apply that globally across your entire website. Super easy, super powerful. Now, as always, I would love to get your feedback on the techniques covered in this particular video and also on Jet Engine and Jet Smart filters in general. Do you like these? Do you think there's something that you think you could start using? How are you finding this series of dynamic websites using Jet Engine? Are these tutorials covering things that you didn't know about, or are there more specific things you'd like to see covered in future videos? If there are, I would love to hear your feedback, so please pop those in the comment section below. Let's get that conversation started, and we can see what we need to create in the future to give you all the skills that you need to create beautiful WordPress websites using Jet Engine. If you enjoyed this video, check out these other great videos on the channel that will help you get up to speed with how you can use WordPress and a whole range of different tools. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, but let me know in the comment section what you did or didn't like about the video. It helps me create better content for you moving forward. Well, as always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.